Hello, I'm Georgia Jones. I am with the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. I am the Extension Food Specialist. And today I'm going to talk with you about the Farm to School program that we've been doing in conjunction with the Center for Rural Affairs. And the goal of the project is to help you as a food service director be able to source local food products for your school cafeteria. We're going to talk about local foods and what local foods are. We'll talk about seasonality of food products, resources for using local foods, as well as sharing a few resources. <coughs> Sorry. First of all, there is no definition for what a local food is. USDA has not defined the term local, so people are free then to make their own decision as to what local food means for them. For some, local means it is within the county. For others, it is a state or a region. For some people, it is X number of hours from where they live or X number of miles from where they live. For some people, it is uh, within the state. So that kind of really is up to you. And that freedom leaves you, leaves it up to you to make a decision as to what local food is. But when you define what local food is, that tells you where you're going to purchase product from what area. Then we get into seasonality of foods and food products. I think we've forgotten a lot about what seasonal products are because we can go to the grocery store and get what we want to when we want to. So seasonality does not really exist for us but it still does exist for Mother Nature. Seasonality really is the time of the year when harvest or flavor of a given type of food is at its peak. It is also usually when that item is the cheapest and the freshest on the market, which means for us in the state of Nebraska, we're probably going to purchase peaches in the summer, early fall. We're going to purchase apples in the fall. We're going to, uh, in a few weeks, we're going to be purchasing fresh strawberries, few weeks meaning we're going to be doing them in uh, May or June, we're going to be purchasing strawberries. There is one resource to help you determine what seasonality in, is in your area. It's an app. It is from University of Missouri, and it is also part of University of Nebraska. If you go into your iPhone, uh, your app store, either on your iPhone or your Android, you can get the app. The app is free and it will tell you what the products are available seasonal in your area. Seasonal Simple also has a book that is especially for food service workers, and it can be ordered from University of Missouri Extension. The last one is the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. The Nebraska Department of Ag has a seasonal, um, a seasonal produce guide on their website, so they also have a number of products and a number of things links to help you out. And this particular one is Nebraska National School Lunch Program. And this one is Nebraska Department of Education, which tell a Nebraska Department of Education has a list of resources for you. And one of the resources they have is the Center for Rural Affairs. You can click onto their website through Nebraska Department of Education. You also have one uh, procuring local foods for child nutrition programs is another sheet that helps you out. Uh, and depending on what you want to do, there are some Nebraska beef in schools, products, how to use them, maybe how to procure them in your area. There are some ranches in certain areas of the state that will slaughter an animal for a particular school system. There are also other things such as a high tunnel fact sheet, especially if you particularly want to grow products at your school. And the, uh, the other two is USDA school website. USDA has been doing a lot with Know Your Farm and a lot with local food products because consumers have demanded it. So USDA uh, farm school website should be a good resource for you. And this is the USDA food website. Uh, this one is Community Food Systems, Food and Nutrition Service. If you go to USDA and type in Community School System, this should come up for you. Some of the other things you may want to consider when you're doing farm to school is to tour a farm. I think for a lot of us, we have gotten away from growing our own food, so we don't really have a understanding of what a farm looks like. One idea for connecting with a farmer may be to go on a tour. And if you do the farm tour, you may want to go before you take your students. The other one is a school garden. There are a lot of schools that do have a garden. 
you may want to realize now that school gardens for the state of Nebraska, the peak gardening season is when most school systems are out. So you may have to plan around that and try and figure out how you're going to handle gardening when schools traditionally would be out for the state of Nebraska. You may also be able to get the farmer to come to the school. I think sometimes it's good for the students to be able to connect with the person that grew food for them, to talk to them to see what they grew. If possible, take your children on a tour of the farm. There are a lot of farms now that will let you come onto the farms and see how things work. The last one is to try and get the students involved. One is if you have small children, you may want to have them draw pictures of the farm and what they think the farm looks like. If possible, if you go to the farm, maybe you want to take some pictures and post them around the school. The more involvement that you can get from the students, the better you're going to be. One of the other things is to make sure that you train your staff. And you, as a food service director, should have some understanding of what your staff knows and what you think they may need to know in order to use basic products. If they have been for years, have used convenience products, they may need some help with going back to basic ingredients. So you will have to determine what you think they may need for training. But one of the things you may think about when you're doing training it's not a skill. Um, most of us are not chefs. We haven't been trained to do it. I think the better knives you have, the better skills you have, the better you're going to be at using nice knives and nice skills. If you live near an area with um, a culinary school, maybe talk to the chef. If you have a trained chef in your community, you may want to talk to them about coming in and giving some cooking lessons or some nice skill lessons to your workers. Thank you. Uh, here are some ideas as you begin to start to use local food products. Number one, start small. Don't try and bite the whole thing off at one time. First, I think maybe identify a few items, five to ten products that you think you're going to use the most. And these are maybe the things you want to start with in incorporating into your food. Look to see what farms are near you. If possible, try and visit those farms or at least talk to the farmer. And commit to buying one food product locally each month. And only you can determine what that's going to be. It may be in the fall that you buy apples once a month just to have the kids taste something that's a little bit different. So, And also, when you want to purchase products, if you think you can possible plan ahead, because right now is when farmers are starting to plant, usually March, April, they really are starting to plant. They also are starting to order seeds around December. So you may want to give those things thought as you determine your your next year. If possible, involve the teachers. You would uh, get the buy-in from the teachers, the administrators, parents, and the community. Also, don't forget to get the students involved. Maybe before you put a new product in the capture, you want to do a classroom station. Bring the students in as much as you possibly You'll possibly see if you can find a local food mentor. This is someone who has gone through the system. They know how to do it. They've been very successful at it. Call them up and see if they will help you to get started. Um, there's other food service directors. You may want to have, if you have a local restaurant that uses a lot of local products, talk to them. Uh, also, be patient. You're not going to do all of this in one day. You may not do it all in one year. Start small and grow. And the last thing is to share your story. The community needs to know what you're doing. We'd like to know what we're feeding our children. We also want to share with them how we think this is benefiting the students, how we benefit in the community, how we're benefiting the farmers. Are you throwing away less food? Do children ask for these products now? Are they eating better? So those are some of the things you want, you want to share with the community. If you know your community, you may want to share the story with your local radio, or your local newspaper. And the last one is, my name is Georgia Jones. That's my contact information, gjones2 at unl.edu. And my phone number is 472-3225, area code is 402. I do work at UNL, which is a public institution, which means we're here to serve you. So please feel free to call me if you can't find me there. Um, you can also get in touch with me through the Center for Rural Affairs. 
And the last person's name on the here is Kristen, Kirsten Bailey. And Kirsten is with the Center for Rural Affairs. And you can get her at Kirsten Bailey, Kirsten B at CFRA dot org, or her phone number is 402-367-8989. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to the slide. I hope we have helped you as you progress along in the purchasing of local food products. Please feel free to give me or Kirsten a call. We'll be happy to assist you in any way possible. Thank you.